So before we start, you guys need to let me know how much stamina you have dumped into this freaking equipment system. Because I don't know about you guys, but uh, I'm pretty sure I've been refreshing like three or four times a day and then like th this is all I have to show for it. On top of dumping a lot of the other stamina pots, like honestly, this bad boy is so depressing. Hi, welcome back to another Revive Witch video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about equipment. I guess the best equipment, we're talking equipment tier lists and all of that. But really the tier list is pretty straightforward and honestly, it's got me pretty confused. I have some pretty mixed feelings about these guys. So let me just hop into the workshop and show you guys what I have successfully farmed. And so again, in this video, I do want to discuss a lot of these guys over here, the legendary equipments as well as their effects because I have done some testing and the test results they're not exactly what I wanted to see let's put it that way all right and so without further ado let me introduce you to my equipment box so let's look at what we have over here generally speaking I've only really juiced up the ones that are at base stats of 740 gear score so you can see this guy over here rating 740 for you guys who aren't really familiar with the equipment system essentially legendary gear is at 740 or at 690 rating and so as you guys can see 740 for this necklace health and physical defense fence and if I hop over to this guy here this dark necklace is kind of like the equivalent we've got a 690 rating however if you have a look at the base stats it is slightly slightly more the 740 is slightly more than the 690 and so it's from this that I kind of want to make my first observation and it's that man it really does not matter if we're just looking at it from like a base stats point of view these 40 rating points is it really is inconsequential like in the long run especially because we have to put so much freaking stamina in and we end up with a whole bunch of this stuff and obviously it's better to juice up your 740 weapons and armor but like sometimes luck just has other plans all right and so let me backtrack a little bit so again i've juiced up a whole bunch of 740 equips you can see like all of them are at 4366 which is the max gear score when you take up a 740 gear score equip i think at the end of the day as long as you are getting the legendaries the 690 or the 740s and juicing them up to level 50 i think that is more than adequate for end game all right and so that covers off like my kind of decisioning for all of these guys like it's nice to see an effect which is what i will talk about very very shortly but before we move on i do want to address like the whole oh like what about gear progression what should i go from what to what to what and so my advice has always been go with your purples get them to level 30 and then they will tide you over until you're able to clear equipment stage 8 and then from there you can just farm the heck out of equipment stage 8 to hopefully fill out like your equipment roster with the legendary equips all right and so let's start talking about tier lists or oh, let's start talking about how good each of these items are or like their effects and so let's just kind of go in the order of what I have because a lot of these effects are actually the same. So first up, we have the Collar of Alice. When health drops to zero, heals other dolls for 20% of max health. Now this is junk and you're going to hear me say this a lot today because a lot of it is actually junk. Like, don't get me wrong, guys. This may one day come in clutch. Like maybe it's going to heal up your dolls and then it's going to get you that extra little bit of damage, which will get you across the line. But generally speaking, when one of your dolls die, it's pretty much GG at that point, right? There were only very, very very few possibilities where I could see this actually working. The first thing that I tested was for Gorvague, where Gorvague actually transforms. So if you guys don't know Gorvague, this here is Gorvague. And so she has a transformation on her second skill where she turns into a monster for a set amount of times, 10 seconds. And then after 10 seconds, she turns back into her base form. So what I tested was if the ring would actually heal your teammates when she came out of the transform. And so how I tested the ring was I put the ring on her and then I tried to see if when Gorvague Vague exits her transformed demon form if the rest of my dolls on the field would actually get the heal and sadly that was not the case and so that rules out the first possibility and so the second possibility is if you want to do like some kind of formation cheese right so for battle I believe a lot of people have figured out that you can scam that bonus over here so for example if I actually wanted to run a uh, tornel instead of Amanami over here what I actually could do is put tornel over here as a backup and then just put somebody weak yet is Mercury. So uh, somebody like her. And so I've just slotted in La Crima. And so as you can see, I have the full buffs up here. And then when the battle starts, hopefully the AOE is going to kill the La Crima and then Tornel will go into the back. This works a lot better if like it's your tank that you want to slide into the team because they will be taking the damage up front and actually be dying so that their uh, Yothaya in this case would be able to come in. But honestly, this tech hasn't really been that worth it. And so this is kind of that scenario where I could envision that ring working. If your character is going to die at the very start of the battle, 
Like, what's the point, right? What's the point? Like, perhaps the boss does some kind of, like, big explosion at the start and then, like, your first character dies and then, like, the ring triggers and then everyone gets healed. Maybe that could be kind of a good use case, but as far as I can tell, that sounds like crap to me. And so, my guys, this guy over here, this is dog water. It is not good at all. However, I am happy to be proven wrong. If you guys do find some awesome use case for this, do let me know. But otherwise, let's move on to the next one, which is the same one, and so we can move on to the card. So these guys are actually probably some of my favorite items in the game because what we have here is a 15% damage mitigation under the effects of debuffs. Yes, it is conditional under debuffs, but compared to all of the other effects, this is actually a good one. And so the thing about this effect on Bending Will is that there is not too much to say about it. And so let's move on. And so on this armor piece, you will see we have Unbending Will as well. So then there is the question of is health and physical defense or health and magic defense better? The answer is 100%. 100% it depends. Depending on your tanks as well as your needs, right? So for example, magic defense actually boosts your affluence magic shredding. And then on the flip side, you may be fighting against a boss that does a whole bunch of physical damage. And so this guy would be appropriate. In my opinion, between these two, there is no better. They are both just as good. It's just very, very situational. All right, and so moving on, I've got this chalice thing over here. So now we get to talk about frenzy. Now I have to say that this effect frenzy is probably the most disappointing out of all of them. And the reason that it's disappointing pointing is because increase the doll's attack by 0.2% for every 1% max health lost. When I first read this, I was like, oh man, it sounds freaking awesome. I can just like keep taking damage, healing it up, and then like, you know, I'll just get more attack over time. That is not the case. That is not how it works. I've tested it. I tested it on the dummy. How Frenzy actually works is it's based on current max HP. And so if you are always at full HP, you're not getting anything. And so my guys, this is just really, really reinforcing the fact that there is very, very small difference between the 740 grades and the 690 grade legendary gear and so yeah that that just really isn't it and so if you guys don't believe me just hop into like the formation the simulator and you guys can try it yourself see the amount of damage that you do at full health and then just take some damage and then see the amount of damage that you do afterwards and then after that heal back up to full and you'll realize that you're doing the same amount of damage as you were at the start all right so the next few are probably going to be frenzy yep all frenzies and unbending will and so that's it for these effects over here i'm pretty sure all of the gear that is dropped from the equipment eight stage is going to be like these three. So inheritance of life, unbending will, as well as frenzy. And so just to quickly wrap up all of these, unbending will is 100% the best one out of all of the gear that you can possibly get. And then you got these two, which I think generally speaking are almost equally as useless. I think the frenzy may be helpful at some point, but think about it this way. For every 1% max HP loss, you gain 0.2%. So therefore for 10% max HP loss, you gain 2% of attack. So that means if you're dead, then you gain 20% attack. Like, can you see how hard it actually is to make this guy scale? So even at 50% HP, you'll be at 10% extra attack, which is okay. But then again, you're pretty much always going to be at full HP, especially in game. Like you might dip to that 50% for like a brief second, and then you'll just heal back up. All right. Sorry, guys. I freaking ranted again. So again, Unbending Will is probably the best one. Frenzy, I guess, because it actually is mildly useful. Some Sometimes, but I still think it's pretty crap. And then we come back over here, inheritance of life. This seems like a waste of time. And of course, if you guys have found a use case for these, like, <laughs> What, this one, like, if you're doing, like, auto on stages, it could make your autos go faster? Like, actually valid use cases? Then hit me up. Do let me know. But otherwise, we are going to move on to the ones in the shop. All right, so welcome to the legendary equipment box. I'm going to go ahead and click that and show you guys this. So what we have here, guys, are the named items. So Sirius, we've got Helios, and this is probably, like, Bilius or something. Nope, it's Envari. Okay. Okay, and so you can see down here, they each have their different effects. So let's start off with Sirius. And so not only for Sirius, but for all of the weapons, they are going to to have orderly fashion. Increases damage and healing effect of the skill by 3% for every point of order energy gained. And so let me talk about this because I thought this was so cracked and again, I was proven wrong. So the way that I interpreted it was that it was gonna be scaling as well. For every single point of order energy that I used, I'd be gaining 3% damage or 3% healing. You know what? <laughs> Now that I think about it, that does seem a little bit overpowered. All right, and so what I do want to say about this one is that it is based on your current order energy. And so what this means is that if at the time of trigger on your skill, you had like 10 order energy and your skill cost was like a two or a three, it would take you down to like a seven order energy. Then you take that number and then you multiply it by 3%. So in that case, you would be like 21% extra damage or healing effect. So you can already tell that this is like kind of good. Like I, I would probably take this over frenzy every time. Yes, it does have a 
conditional attached to it, like the order energy that you have at the time. But at least it's actually easier to scale this one than like losing HP. Like Enmity, there are not many games which have Enmity as like good design. All right, so moving on, we have uh, complexity for Helios as well as the other armors. Increases physical defense and magic defense by 3% for every point of chaos energy gain. Now, this is actually kind of good. And it's hard because the other one, like the armor piece one, the unbending will is actually quite good as well. So again, a very, very similar concept, physical defense and magical defense, how much chaos points you have, multiply that by 3%. And so that means that the maximum amount that you could have is probably like times 10 at most, like 30% for both biz defense and magic defense. But I'm pretty sure that the calculation is after you've consumed the energy itself. So I would say it's probably going to be like nine times, so 27 for each of them. Now, what's really nice about complexity and this guy over here, orderly fashion, is that when you go into the burst mode with like the, tr uh, the star thing, it goes freaking crazy, right? Because if you're spamming skills and they are not depleting, this means that you're gonna be at a constant 30% bonus for both of these guys here. And so I would say these items are, they are significantly better than the ones that are being dropped in the equipment stage. And then that takes us lastly to the ring over here, Envari, Ring of Genesis. But what we're more interested in is periodic supply. So heal self for 10% of max health once every 10 seconds. Uh, I think this is way better than the counterpart that's being dropped in equipment eight. This is non-conditional. It just happens every 10 seconds. The intervals are quite long, but it's 10% of your maximum HP. You can kind of already see how this makes units like Ella unkillable. And so to really wrap things up about this box, I think that every single equip that has an effect that comes from this box, these are all fantastic. However, again, there is a coin flip. So if I click into here, there is the counterpart shield of fairies versus Sirius. And you will notice that this guy is the 690, which does not have an effect. So it is a freaking coin flip every time you go for one of these items. All right, I think that's enough bashing on these items. Like these ones, these ones are actually quite good. I, I really like them, but I've not gotten a single one of these guys and my luck has been quite bad. And on the other hand, if I come back over to the workshop of all of these guys, I think that Unbending Will is the only one that's really, really worth it. However, I've learned to settle. I am looking at this, I'm like, okay, well, I'm just gonna juice this up, not because of this like crappy effect down here, but because of the fact that it has a little bit of more stats. So yeah, that's that. That is my thoughts on equipment. And so it's time to ask you guys, Maybe you guys have had a better experience with this. Maybe you guys have found out more about all of this equipment system, the 690 versus 740. Maybe there are some like hidden skills that I'm not seeing, but like, like I said, I'm not seeing it. And so if you guys do have any tips or thoughts about these equipment effects, do let me know down in the comments below because like, I'm just really not feeling the majority of these. And if you do end up leaving a comment, I would really appreciate it because it means you've watched up until the end of the video. And so thank you guys so much. But otherwise, if this video has helped you, please consider a like. And if you would like to like me more, then please consider a sub. But otherwise, as this hammer chick once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.